love has brought us together so that we can grow in an understanding of love through mm-hmm. each other. That's the beauty of this higher gratitude is the realization that I didn't bring my partner into my life. I wasn't the one who chose the, the, the thing that I love to do in this world. I was drawn to it because through being attracted to my partner, to what I love in life, the mountaintop, the hike, the birds, whatever it may be, I am revealed to myself. I get to discover that were it not for that love, I would never know the love that lives in me. So that love is, in fact, not just the mirror in which I see these beautiful things, but it is the mirror in which I see myself as an instrument of this love. Welcome to the Gratitude Podcast on www.georgeandbenta.com, where you'll hear a new story each week that will inspire more gratitude in your own life. Our mission is to inspire 100,000 people to discover how to feel gratitude and live a happy life through the amazing life stories of our successful guests and their actionable tips. And now, the host of our podcast, George Benta. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with us, we have Guy Finley. He's a best-selling self-help writer and internationally, internationally renowned spiritual teacher. He's the author of over 45 books and audio programs and video programs, including his acclaimed book, The Secret of Letting Go. His popular books and audio programs, several of which have become international bestsellers, have sold over 2 million copies worldwide. This episode is supported by Premium Jane. With free shipping on all products, Premium Jane is dedicated to delivering the natural benefits of CBD to those who truly need it. Go to premiumjane.com and save 20% with coupon code GRATITUDE. He is considered a modern-day mystic and practical philosopher. Guy's wisdom cuts straight to the heart of today's most pressing personal and social issues. Relationships, success, addiction, stress, peace, happiness, freedom, and leads the way to a higher life. Guy has been featured has been a featured guest on over 700 television and radio shows including national appearances on ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and NPR. He is a regular contributor to the Huffington Post, BeliefNet, Positively Positive, and many more. In 2011, he launched the One Journey Project, an award-winning interfaith website illuminating the unseen spiritual unity underlying all world religions. I, I think that's amazing and we will definitely um, get to this at one point. But first, Guy, welcome to the Gratitude Podcast. <clears throat> Thank you, Georgian. And I am thankful to have the time with you. So am I. I'm really happy to have you here and to have this conversation. Uh, you're also uh, the author of a, of a new book, uh, relationship magic, waking up together. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful um, idea. Waking up together, and uh, we will speak about uh, this book as well in in this interview. But uh, firstly, I would like us to go into a concept that I I think it's it's very fascinating that you have. Um, divine dissatisfaction um i I know that you uh that you have a really interesting perspective on uh, the fact that we get dissatisfied in our life at times and i'm really curious how this divine dissatisfaction um relates to gratitude in in a very important way, Georgian, the idea of divine dissatisfaction is directly related to gratitude. So let's examine it 
together for a moment. First, let's de describe what divine dissatisfaction is, because it's just a, a, a term that I coined to uh, describe a very common experience that all of us have, but that most of us don't quite understand its meaning. All of us, and you be please advocate for the listeners, are pretty fortunate in life relative to others that we see, other countries, other cultures where people aren't afforded as much opportunity as at least potentially we in the West and in your country and other uh, first world countries are capable of, of allowing human beings to be. And no. as such, Georgian, we have uh, so much that we're, we're we, so much opportunity, so many ways in which we can go into the world and not just make our way, but through our efforts, receive the rewards of our uh, of the things that we have chosen to do. And here's the point: the divine dissatisfaction. If the things of the, if the I'm sorry about that. No if problem. the things of if the things of the world, in and of themselves, were capable of making us feel whole, completing us, getting that sense of, of arriving at a, at a satisfaction. If they could do that in and of themselves, Georgian, we would already feel complete. We wouldn't be running around looking for, hoping that the next thing that we're going to do will finally turn the table and make us free. And that it doesn't. And the reason that all of these relationships in the world fail to make us whole, bring about the freedom, lasting sense of it that we want, is because there is something in us that needs something more than what this world can give to us. In the end, this is, this is the impulse behind all men and women who seek a relationship with God, with Christ, with the divine, whatever it is that we may call that. So divine dissatisfaction is just a way I say that if the world itself had the power to produce in us a lasting sense of happiness and wholeness, we would have found it by now, and we haven't. So that's the first part, divine dissatisfaction. The second part is that little by little as we realize this, we begin to understand that the disappointments in our life, those relationships that did not bring about what we hope they would, even though they may be good. I've been married for 40 years, Georgian. I'm the luckiest man on earth. <laughs> but both my wife and I understand that there are relationships that belong to this world. And then there is another relationship that we only eventually come to realize with something that is interior, something that is spiritual in nature. And that's where the real gratitude is, because eventually we start to realize that we can have what this world offers us. But when we have what, if you will, God, the divine offers us, what real love provides, then we have the whole thing. We're, we have a gratitude that can't be taken away from us when the world around us changes because it belongs to a changeless world. That's the point. Wow. That's so deep and so beautiful. It's it's an interesting perspective on gratitude that uh, uh, I have never heard before as, uh, as a feeling that, that is so deep that's actually like like in the ocean, like in the bottom of the ocean, regardless regardless of the waves, it's still there. It's still yes, yes. It's so deep, yeah. And 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 look at, and I hope we don't get too deep too fast. You keep me, you keep me up on the top here. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I mean, Georgian, we go through this world, our lives, 
And again, by grace, by effort, the combination, we succeed and become respected maybe in our profession. We, we're fortunate enough to have a family if we are. We have our health. But all of the things that we experience in this life that define us presently as human beings belong to the conditions around us. And when we live as human beings dependent upon conditions that we have no actual control over, then the condition changes. And when it does, our contentment goes flying out the window. I can be the richest man in the world, and if somehow something happens, the, 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 the coffee crop fails in Brazil, and I'm a coffee lover, suddenly I feel like I don't have anything because something that defined me outside of me has changed, and now I don't know who I am for that moment, so I have fear. And I'm saying that we can't really have a deep and constant gratitude for being alive until we begin to realize that part of our life, the purpose of it is to bring us into a relationship with a love, a light, a truth that is unconditional. And that's what my new book, Relationship Magic, actually talks about and helps the reader realize that there is a relationship that we can have with something higher than ourselves that brings about in our everyday relationships a much greater gratitude for them because we start to realize the true purpose that all of our relationships have, which is to introduce us to parts of ourselves that otherwise we would never, ever know. Wow. I love that perspective. So it's actually a way in which we explore ourselves, basically, yeah. the relationships yes. we're in. And um, the, the interesting part is that we don't always like what we see, especially <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to deeper relationships, like in family or uh, in a couple relationship, many things that we don't particularly like come up. <laughs> What yeah. do we do with them? No, but that's perfect. Okay, so look, this is delightful, Georgian. Um, I live in Southern Oregon in the United States. And for those who don't know about Southern Oregon, it is a, 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 a mountainous, <clears throat> tree-covered, beautiful part of the country. And by, by fortune, I live on top of a small mountain just outside of a little community called Merlin, Oregon, where I live and teach. And I'm looking out the window right now, and I wish that everyone could see it. There's three deer that are grazing oh. Oh, maybe 30 feet from where I sit. They're friends of mine. I've been feeding them and their family for 20 years. There's turkeys. Oh there's squirrels. There's birds at my feeder. And the sun is out. And all the trees with their new leaves from spring are, are reflecting this beautiful light. Now, I sit here and I know I'm lucky. I have such gratitude. The gratitude is because when I look out in this world that I live in, revealed within me because of what I see is a quality and a character in my consciousness that I wouldn't ordinarily know without being in relationship with the world that I'm looking at. So we all should understand that. We go to the ocean, we look up at a mountain range, we, we go outside and see a, a timeless night sky. Why are we drawn to these things? Because when we are in relationship with them in the moment, they are literally awakening and revealing in us a certain beauty, a certain depth, a certain character that we don't know lives in our consciousness until the condition allows the revelation of it. So the first point 
is that these conditions outside of us that we love reveal to us moments and qualities in ourselves that we also love because they are deep and abiding and stirring, aspiring in their appearance. So then we meet somebody. And when we first fall in love, everybody knows what that's like. We can't get enough of the person we're with yeah. because <laughs> they, they are doing for us what I've described. My partner is revealing to me things about myself that I had no idea lived in me. The passion, the, the, the willingness and the longing to give something up for the sake of them. All of these wonderful attributes are awakened by my partner. And I love basically not just my partner, but I love my partner because through the relationship, I am being completed. I am gaining a new kind of self-realization through the revelations they are bringing into my life. Are you following me, Georgia? Yeah, definitely. All right. Now, to your question. So we love, I call it the woo-hoo stage, when our partner reveals to us all of these magnificent, deep, passionate parts of ourselves. Now I get to the woo-hoo, the boo-hoo stage, from woo-hoo to boo-hoo, because the same principle is now working. My partner, instead of mirroring, being the mirror of my consciousness, of things in me I want to see, by divine grace, by good fortune, they are revealing in the mirror of this relationship parts of my consciousness I did not know were there. Limitations, demands, fears, jealousies, qualities of a level of consciousness that are still in me, but that I am asleep to until my partner pushes that button, stirs in me that particular order of self, and I go, oh my God, and then rather than a, than um, looking and saying, you know what, thank you, I'm grateful for you helping me wake up to these parts of myself, instead of that, I go, no, you're to blame, you're the one responsible for this unwanted feeling, this revelation, and that's where we miss the mark in our relationships, not just with our partners, but with every moment and every person everywhere in the world, because that's what relationships are. Their purpose is to awaken us first and foremost to what is beautiful and satisfying, and then awaken us to these parts of ourselves that are in the way of realizing that the relationship can bring about a complete new order of self, a new discovery that releases us from who and what we've been that is limited. Sorry to go on for so long, but I wanted to get the big idea out. No, this is perfect because it's a very deep concept and uh, a very powerful one. And uh, it's very applicable. Like uh, for our listeners, we can go into our relationships. And of course, when things are great and uh, when we have a gratitude practices, it's easy to to see the beautiful things uh, in our partners. But there are times when that can be quite a challenge. And uh, I know that Guy also has a really beautiful perspective on the pain that we feel when we argue, for instance, and um, hurting together. And the fact that when uh, your partner or yourself is in, or you are in pain, you're actually hurting together. Can you uh, talk a little bit about this concept with us? I think it's it's really beautiful. Yes, I, I, I'm I'm grateful that you uh, found that section of the book and are drawn to it because it's so important for us to understand what when we hear it. I'll say it. 
we go, of course that's true. But when we get negative, when we don't understand the reason for the pain we're feeling with our partner, we forget completely the following. Love can't turn into hatred. Love doesn't cultivate resentment. Love never separates. It integrates. Love heals. That's its nature. It doesn't hurt. And as we know, if we know anything about Scripture, East or West, perfect love casts out fear. It doesn't create fearful conditions. So we know the beauty of love with one part of us, but when we are stirred into some kind of suffering by an action that our partner is taking toward us, we completely forget the beauty of that love and instead are blinded by our negative reaction. So here's the first point. When we are negative, Georgian, we are blind. Pure and simple, we go blind. We go mm -hmm. blind because all we can see in the moment when we're negative is the one we blame for our pain. The important point here is that, and I'll ask you, Georgian, when you get upset with somebody, if you're angry with someone or feel somehow betrayed, in that moment, are you happy with your partner? Are you a content human being? Or before you express the negativity, the anger, the regret, the resentment, before you express that pain, are you not in pain yourself? And isn't the fact that you're in pain the reason why you're lashing out at your partner? Isn't that why we lash out at our partner? We're first in pain. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we, in that moment, are in pain, and we are blaming our partner for our pain. So now we lash out at our partner, and what happens to our partner when we lash out at them? Are they happy? Are they content? Or by the fact of our wanting to punish them or prove that we're right, does that action not produce pain and subsequent resistance in them yeah so what happens when two people are sitting there and each of them is convinced that the other person is responsible for their pain when the fact of the matter is and this is critical my partner did not create pain in me my partner revealed that there is pain in me waiting to be stirred awake based on something that is as simple as me resisting you correcting me. We don't like it when our partner corrects us. We think it's natural to lash back, to say, well, you're just like that, or you do that too. Instead of understanding that the reason we summarily resist our partner in that moment is because we have, without knowing it, an expectation that lives inside of us that we should never be corrected, that we're beyond being uh, guided by someone. Our opinion is the only opinion. Now, when we're quiet and calm, we don't think that about ourselves. <laughs> Do you think to yourself, Georgian, that you're beyond repro reproach and that you're you're a perfect human being? No if way. If I ask it, you say, no, of course not. <laughs> but if someone challenges you, what happens? Get defensive. Yes, I'm right. You're wrong. Here's the point. If I'm negative, I'm wrong. I'm not wrong because... This negativity um, has suddenly been revealed in me. I'm wrong because I'm rejecting the revelation of that level of consciousness that my partner has revealed. That's the beauty of partnerships. 
It isn't just that we get along perfectly. It's that there is a perfect accord possibly between us where instead of blaming each other for what is revealed through our relationships, we use the revelation as a form of self-realization so that I can begin to wake up to the demands that I place on my partner from perhaps past experiences where I'm a jealous man or a jealous woman, not because I see my partner looking around, but because I've had other moments of feeling betrayed and my partner may not even be looking around at another person, but I look at them and that's what I see because it comes up from the past in me and it pounces my partner and often produces, by the way, the very thing I fear will happen. Yeah, exactly. So to yeah. understand, to actually realize my partner is in pain too. We never think to ourselves when we're fighting with our partner that they're suffering like we are. Because all we know is that we want to get rid of our pain and all we see is the one we blame for it. So that when we're blind, love has no chance to work its magic. And its magic is to reveal to us that we are in this moment together. I'm not the one responsible for the pain and you're not the one responsible for the pattern. This pain is driving when we blame, but when we can see it, we can begin to recognize someone has to change here. Someone has to drop the hatred. Someone has to see the pattern can't change if we're both driving it with dark, angry thoughts and feelings. And that revelation brings about the opportunity for sacrifice, for real love, which is giving myself up because I recognize the self that I am momentarily identified with, that level of consciousness is the problem and not the solution it promises if I do what it demands me to do. Then the pattern can change because at least one person in that pattern understands the only way it can change is if I see the truth of myself and accept it and stop identifying with who and what is trying to make me the winner in that moment. Exactly, exactly. And uh, what I found in, in, in my experience that... Um, focusing on the heart on on what you feel and on the love that you have for the other person works miracles and um at times you can actually see or actually feel um the fact that the words or the actions were out of pain and uh, yeah. and I, I really love your concept of the fact that uh we are hurting together, but we are bringing love to this and we are growing together through, uh, through this love. Uh, uh, now, very important. You said we are going together uh, through this for love. Uh, growing together. But, yes, but the, but the truth is that love has brought us together so that we can grow in an understanding of love through mm -hmm. each other that's the beauty of this higher gratitude is the realization that i didn't bring my partner into my life i wasn't the one who chose the 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 thing that i love to do in this world i was drawn to it because through being attracted to my partner to what i love in life the mountaintop the hike the birds, whatever it may be, 
I am revealed to myself. I get to discover that were it not for that love, I would never know the love that lives in me. So that love is, in fact, not just the mirror in which I see these beautiful things, but it is the mirror in which I see myself as an instrument of this love. This is such a powerful, important idea. Because as we awaken to that, we start to recognize, and you said it very well, if I actually saw that my partner was suffering because of what I was doing, and what I was doing, I was doing because I blamed them for my pain. I even write a whole chapter about this in the book. If I could see another human being suffering because of my actions, I would have to bring an end to that action because love will not allow a human being to make another human being suffer. It will not allow it. That's called conscience. And conscience is asleep in us. It's been put to sleep by a world driven mad with pain. It doesn't understand. And the more it doesn't understand the cause, the nature of that pain, the more it produces different solutions, phony baloney laws and moral codes to keep the thing ideally at a peaceful state when it's not. It's just a way in which the pain stays hidden. And if we want the world to change, we have to start changing ourselves through our relationships and what they show to us about these unconscious parts of ourselves that we've been instrumenting but can finally learn to see and release. Mm -hmm. I understand. That's that's quite amazing and very very powerful and deep and it it makes you think like how our individual relationships actually have an impact on the world. And oh, yeah. uh, basically this this is this is the world and how it's created uh, by and through relationships yes but uh, i wanted to get to uh, to another part of your sure. book um how do we get to uh, feel that fresh start again that magic in the relationship and that appreciation that we we felt in the beginning you know if you and i were to transport back in time let's say to even the 1800s and we took with us a little pocket flashlight and we pulled the flashlight out and showed someone that we met there the light coming out of this little instrument they would say oh my god you're a wizard wouldn't they they'd say yeah. that's, that's magic now we know it's not magic because we understand something about a little light bulb, we understand about a LED, we understand about batteries, the conveyance of electricity into an instrument. So the book is called Relationship Magic, Waking Up Together, because there are moments when, and we've been talking about it leading up to this, here I am, and I was at the supermarket, and somebody pushed right in front of me while I was getting ready to check out with two shopping carts loaded with small items. <laughs> <laughs> so we all know what that's like. We don't go, gee, so glad you were rude and pushed in front of me. <laughs> we might even get negative and say something. And it wouldn't end just there, would it? We'd get in our car thinking about how rude people are. We'd drive home, maybe because we're caught up in thought, get cut off by someone or cut someone off. They honk at us. We get more mad. Then we walk in the door and our partner says, hi, sweetheart. And what do we do? We bark at them. Yeah. Why? Because we're carrying the residue of this anger from the moments before. Now let's change the scenario. I get out of the car and because I'm still angry, I drop the bag of groceries and my anger hits this peak moment. And there, because I have been willing to learn these principles, 
I suddenly see, oh my God, I am on fire. I've been reliving a moment seemingly for the sake of understanding it and getting rid of it. But the more I've attended to this moment, the more I ache for the revisitation of that pain. And I understand now the condition isn't causing this pain in me. It is a function of a level of consciousness that doesn't know better than to keep reliving the thing it doesn't want. And in that split second, Georgian, it's dropped. I am outside and the observer of a, an, a state of myself that I was suffering from the moment before. And now instead of suffering, I'm grateful for the revelation, for the light that showed me my unconscious state. So I walk into the house full of a refreshed understanding, not bringing my partner my pain, but literally bringing my partner a new human being with a new level of understanding about himself so that I don't bring my pain to my partner. I bring a fresh insight. And when I'm a little bit different, by law, any relationship I'm in is also refreshed. There's a new possibility because just as an example, the magic of being transformed by the revelation and my agreement to see the truth of it allows my partner a, an extra space because maybe they had the same day I did and they're negative. So I walk in and I see they're negative, but I understand in that moment why they're negative. They're living from the same level of consciousness I almost brought into the house with me. So I don't attack back. I give them space. I let them manifest what they do because if I don't resist them, they will see what they're like. I call it the jujitsu of love. <laughs> they throw a punch psychologically and I just step out of the way. I don't try to stop it. I don't try to hit back. I just let them experience their nature without interfering with it. Then my partner has the chance for a magical moment to see I'm not fighting with them, so their pain has nowhere to go. They have to see their pain. Then we have the chance of two human beings each discovering something true about themselves and bringing a new understanding into the relationship that refreshes the relationship and their love together because of it. Wow, this is beautiful. And it it makes so much sense. And I, I could really relate to it. And I could think of situations where where I was able to do that. And it was awesome. And situations in which I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, it didn't turn turn out that uh, that good. But it's it's so powerful and uh yes yes but georgian and i know by the tone of your voice and your spirit that even the moments that you were not able to do the good that you would but rather did the the bad the evil that you didn't want those are learning moments mm -hmm. if i if i don't come out of a moment where i see you know what i cannot i can't believe that i i flipped out and I understand that that moment isn't so that I can judge myself as being bad. It isn't to walk around with guilt because I wasn't able to do the good that I wanted. Instead of blaming myself or the world for my negativity, I understand that in that moment, this unconscious nature was simply greater than my ability to recognize and release it. But because of it, I will be more vigilant. I will understand that when I'm not properly attentive, wanting to witness the revelation the moment produces in me, 
that an unattended mind is the breeding ground of defeat. So I, I gain from that moment the lesson that I must be more mindful. I must be more attentive to myself. Christ said, physician, heal thyself. That's what he's talking about. He said, love thine enemy. That means learn to recognize that the people that you want to blame are actually people that you should learn to appreciate because they are helping you discover the part of you that can only go blind when challenged and that you don't want to be a blind human being anymore. You want to be a human being who sees the truth of himself or herself. And that's what your partner, that's what the problems, that's what this life brings to us are ways in which we can begin to realize an order of love in us that cannot be turned into its opposite. Wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. And um, I, I want to get back to, to something that I mentioned in the beginning uh, to, to wrap this up. I think, at least in my experience, and I would love to, to, to hear your perspective on this, um, I've I've been curious about uh, different uh, ways of seeing God and uh, spirituality, religion, and for me, uh, two spir spiritual th truths that I've seen uh, and that I felt that were everywhere were yes. gratitude and love. Uh, yes. What's your take on this? What if we? <clears throat> What if we understood, not just intellectually, and not just because we had a deep meditation or a bit of grace granted through prayer, or that through mindfulness there was an epiphany that made us feel whole. What if we understood from the inside out that our life, our consciousness, not mine, not Georgians, not the individual listeners, but our consciousness itself is a reflection of something divine. That the world we are in literally exists as a school for our higher education, not a place that we race through to win something, but literally a, a, a level, a kingdom in which the principal gold, the riches, are the revelations that are all built into the moment we are in. And that the purpose of every moment of our life is the transference of this understanding that we are created for the purpose of fulfilling the realization of our relationship with this divine love and intelligence that permeates every fiber of our being. If we understood that as true mystics, as true saints, the true saints, the true mystics in this world will all say that there is a divinity that sits at the bottom of all revelation and that it is this divinity that does not have a name that longs to be realized and have its will recognized through the instrument it created for that purpose. And that's what we are as human beings. So the idea of naming God and of hating anyone who doesn't love the God we love is an act of a mind that is blind to its own definition of what the divine is. When we understand even a little bit of that, then every moment, at least this is how I understand it, we begin to see that all things good come to those for whom the good is all things. And when we see that nothing bad can come out of a moment where we are introduced to parts of ourselves that are self-punishing or that lash out at others, 
What else is that but good because we can begin to die to that part of ourself as a result of the revelation? So that's the grand good, and that's ultimately the grand gratitude, a life that is free of fear because we are created to transcend the fearful parts of ourselves born out of being conditioned by a world that's asleep to itself. Wow. This is amazing, and it's is the perfect ending to uh, to our interview. Thank you so much for being here with us and for imparting so much wisdom and knowledge. I I really appreciate it. And um, in the end, let let our listeners know where they can find you, where they can get uh, your book. Thank you, Georgian. So, one brief comment. Sure. Georgian, Georgian and I both uh, sit here and we can feel what's right. We, can, we feel, I'm hoping the listeners can sense, feel, and acknowledge that these are important ideas. They're not mine. I just say them the way, I, uh, the way I'm given to say them. I see these things and I describe them. But we mm-hmm. must act on the knowledge not enough to acknowledge the truth, not enough to acknowledge gratitude and love. We must act on that knowledge. And if we want to do that, we need new self-understanding. Because in the end, all gratitude comes out of self-understanding, self-knowledge. I'm grateful for a beautiful tree because the beautiful tree shows me its corresponding character in me. That's self-knowledge. That's self-realization. If we want that, we have to do our part. If you want to learn more about what we talked about, there are several ways to do it. First, if you're interested in the book, go to relationshipmagicbook.com. Relationshipmagicbook.com. And on that page, you'll see a way to order the book at a price basically that beats any online retailer. And you get three free gifts with it, including the audio version of the book that I read. Go to RelationshipMagicBook.com. You can order the book anywhere you want and use that same link to get the gifts. You just have to provide the receipt. Next, if you don't want the book but just want to learn a little bit about this work that I'm doing, go to my website, which is GuyFinley.org, G U Y. F-I-N-L-E-Y, GuyFinley.org. And you can browse my website for years just taking the information there as you will. Lastly, I'm on all the social networks. I post on Instagram at least every other day a short video. So I invite you to visit and partake of this knowledge so that we can all, each and every one of us, begin to become a new human being born out of the revelation of the real reason for our relationships. Amazing. Thank you so much, Guy. You're a pleasure, Georgian. Hey, Gratitude Seeker. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this interview. I really appreciate it. And if you could think of one person that would also benefit from it, share it with them. It might actually be the inspiration that they need to make their day or maybe even their life much better. Thank you so much once again. This has been Georgian Benta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude.